So the toxicities seen with aromatase inhibitors are fairly well understood now. Uh, many women have, will have joint stiffness and sort of muscle aching. Um, hot flashes occur early, but usually get better much more quickly than they do with tamoxifen. It's interesting, I mean, joint stiffness occurs with tamoxifen, it just occurs less frequently. Uh, so that's important to keep in mind. Vaginal dryness is an issue. Uh, some women note that they have thinning of their hair. Uh, there is bone loss that can be accelerated in particular, particular women. So some women, uh, particularly if they start with low bone density, are at higher risk for bone uh, density loss. Um, and uh, many studies have shown an increased risk of these uh, osteoporotic type fractures in women who've been on uh, long, long term uh, suppression of uh, estrogen production. And then uh, there are some other kind of funny side effects which, you know, may or it's kind of hard to associate, and they're very much determined by your individual risk. So women. Uh, often have an increase in cholesterol, bad cholesterol, so the LDL versus the HDL, when they uh, go into menopause. And women who have that genetic profile will have a higher cholesterol if you suppress their estrogen even further, their estrogen production. So that's another uh, sort of, it's not directly caused by the aromatase inhibitor, but it's, uh, tamoxifen provides more uh, protection against cardiovascular risk than do aromatase inhibitors. And then there's these other sort of difficult side effects like libido, where we don't have good ways of treating it. Uh, women note that they have less uh, libido, and that's a really big issue for women who are in menopause anyway, and so it can be enhanced with uh, hormone therapy. You know, the risk-benefit profile for aromatase inhibitors is going to always be the greatest in years one to five. Uh, the, at least 50% of your recurrence risk, if you just take an ER positive, HER2 negative uh, patient population, and to some degree, even ER positive, HER2 positive, depending on the subset, uh, the greatest risk of recurrence is in the first five years. So aromatase inhibitor therapy is critical. It's also important to remember that there's a carryover effect. So if you take an aromatase inhibitor for five years or tamoxifen, you still have a reduced risk of recurrence out at least for the tamoxifen data, to 15 years compared to those women who didn't take it or took a shorter course. So by all factors, that's most important. For the second five to 10 years, as we've been discussing, it's very much dependent in terms of the risk-benefit profile on what your risk is. So if your risk is high, you have stage three cancer and ER positive, then that's gonna be a very much to benefit rather than risk. If you have a 0.4 centimeter low grade tumor, it's all going to be for uh, risk, not benefit. So, and then there's going to be women where it's very much a wash and we don't know well. Again, we're going to be really looking for genomic tests that'll help us differentiate out those populations in addition to the clinical uh, pathologic factors I just mentioned. The risk benefit ratio from year 10 to 15 is more complex, and I think that we need uh, more research. Uh, and data from upcoming studies to really understand that better. Uh, right now, I think that you can really see there would be a benefit in women who have an extremely high risk of recurrence, but for the average risk, it's hard to see that benefit right now. So I would say, I think we probably underreport the number of patients that have to discontinue arom aromatase inhibitors because of uh, side effects. Um, certainly, uh, if you look at the analysis that are out there, it's reasonably high. Um, and some uh, reports, I think, can be, can be as high as 20%. And there's actually some data with endocrine therapy, both tamoxifen and aromatase inhibitors, uh, indicating that there's almost 40% of patients are not compliant through five years of treatment. So in my practice, you know, it's variable. The most common reason patients stop aromatase inhibitors for sure is joint pain, which we don't really understand the mechanisms of. So it's, it's very hard to treat and it's very hard to predict. Um, sometimes if you change to another aromatase inhibitor, the joint pain uh, tends to improve. Um, I would say in the main, patients don't stop it because of bone loss, because we can certainly use a bisphosphonate in that setting to try and uh, help with their bones. So I would say overall the most common thing is, is, is joint pain. Also probably menopausal symptoms. Some patients just can't tolerate that either, but I think joint pain is by far the most common one. And my guess is there's some patients that probably don't even tell me they've stopped it and they have. So. 
So for patients on aromatase inhibitors, of course, we know because they cause such profound, profound estrogen loss that they are at risk of developing uh, further bone loss, osteopenia, osteoporosis, and we know the fracture rate is increased with the use of these drugs. Um, what I typically do is I do a baseline bone density study, um, and you know if that looks like they've got osteoporosis, I might consider using tamoxifen for a few years. If it, if it looks like their bones are in reasonably good shape, I'll go ahead with an aromatase inhibitor. And then I try and check the bone density every year if, I can, if, if we can get it covered. Um, and if we see a considerable loss in bone density, then I would consider using a bisphosphonate or another um, bone-directed agent to try and help with, with, with their bones. Um, it certainly is an issue for patients, but I think as long as you're proactive in, in checking the bone density, you can kind of pick up bone loss before they're really at risk of developing fractures. So I think determining it would be through a bone density study, and how we manage it would really depend on you know, the, how much bone they're losing, how quickly they're losing the bone, and how long you're planning to have them on the aromatase inhibitor.